How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and this is PS Ready, the channel all about PlayStation. If you want to keep up to date on everything that has to do with your PS5, there is not a better channel you could be subscribed to, so help me get to 200,000 subs and subscribe today. Yes, the rumors are true. Haircut, haircut, I got a haircut. Uh, you can see the left side of my face now. I hope you enjoy it. I finally gave in to all the comments uh, from you guys, the comments from my wife, the comments from my mom, and I finally got a haircut haircut. <laughs> Anyway, this weekend, all I did was play video games. I'm still cracking away at Rebirth. I've been doing all the side quests. It is so much fun. I've also been getting back into Diablo because I don't know if you saw, but season four looks like a completely different game and I wanted to get a character to level 100 before they revamp the entire thing. All right, so I've got three topics to cover in today's video. The first one is a really easy and quick way to get some free PS5 games. It sounds like clickbait. It's really not. It's kind of crazy that I didn't know about this until now. Second up, we got to talk about the problems the PSN is having because it's getting ridiculous. And third, is this this PS5 Studios last chance? All right, so let's start out with how to unlock some free games for the PS5. Over the weekend when I was playing games, I went through all of the friend requests. I had like over 165 and then I figured out you could just like select them all and accept them. I was talking to some people on the PSN app and then I noticed the like little charm that says I'm level three or whatever on PS stars. So I was like, I've never really given PS stars a chance. I'll look at it. I'll get some free content or whatever my little bug sword for playing Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. I signed up and then I looked at the rewards you can get and I noticed that at the very bottom you can redeem the points on PlayStation Stars for PlayStation Store credit and I had enough to get $30 of credit which is like half a game or one set of armor in Diablo which is what I spent it on but yeah I was able to redeem them right away. I got a $20 one and two $5 gift cards with the points I had accumulated. But the cool thing is I have never engaged with PS Stars. I signed up for it back when it released and then I just left it alone and I noticed that it's actually not that difficult to get points. Obviously the best way to get the most points is to buy games digitally on the PSN. I'm not sure entirely if you can get them for physical games like you can with the Nintendo Switch but yeah I buy a lot of my games digitally these days just because of the ease of doing it and the fact that Amazon never delivers games on time so I'd racked up more than enough points to get 30 bucks of PSN credit which is cool. But then I looked into how to get points points for free and it's honestly pretty easy. Uh, they're not actually free because you have to own games to get points. A lot of the quests or campaigns as they call them are like play one of these five games and you'll unlock something like a 3D render of the Buster Sword or a Jim Ryan bobblehead that you have in your little collection. Now those things, whatever, they're kind of cool. You spin them around. They're like high res renders of different PlayStation items and I think that's kind of cool if you're into PlayStation at all. It's just nice to have this little trophy collection separate than your trophy collection. If you have a lot of the games in the PlayStation ecosystem, uh, you should be able to rack up some points pretty damn quick. And the cool thing is it considers third party games too. So I noticed there's a Far Cry one going on right now. If you play Far Cry 5 or 6, you get a little boomer figure and then you also get points for doing that. I noticed there's a Rise of the Ronin one. So it's not just limited to first party games and it's not just the newest game. So you probably have at least a few of the games that have current campaigns running in your library and you can even get points for messaging your friends or accepting friend requests and things like that. So if you want to build up some credit, uh, sign up for PlayStation Stars because the one big caveat here is you don't start accumulating points until you're signed up. It's really easy to sign up though. You just go in the PlayStation app and click the little logo next to your name and then you sign up and then from that point forward, you'll start earning points for PlayStation Stars. And the real benefit is that once you get to level four, so you accumulate enough points to get your character, your avatar, or whatever to level four, you get priority access to the PlayStation support system, which I said it's cool. It's not cool that that's even a thing. Like you should just get the best customer service all the time from Sony because you bought a $500 console, but knowing that the system is in place at all, like you should take advantage of it and just do some of these campaigns that are like play a game you're already playing, just boot it up. And then you'll have priority access to PlayStation support. It's kind of funny to see this rewards program actually be good because Microsoft's has been great for a very long time but they're actually gutting it like the money you can get from using Bing or like you know doing stuff on your Xbox playing games playing Game Pass or whatever they have steadily decreased the amount of points you get on that service as time has gone on and now it's kind of like a fool's errand to even try but over here on PlayStation PlayStation Stars is actually pretty legit I think it's only been around for like a year and yeah again not even engaging with it at all I had enough points to get some free PlayStation gift cards I talked to a lot of you 
on the PlayStation Network yesterday, and I was really like proud, I guess, to see how many people uh, utilize point systems to get free games. Someone was talking to me and said they use Speedway points. I talked to another guy on Facebook a lot who uses Meyer, which is basically like Michigan Walmart, to get M perk points, and then you save those up and you can get free games. Obviously, that's going to be harder as time goes on because stores like Walmart, stores like Target, uh, stores like Meyer, they're getting rid of physical games. So take advantage of this stuff while you can. Games are just getting more expensive. Even games that don't look up to par with 2024 graphics like Rise of the Ronin are still full price $70 games. And as time goes on, I fully expect the price of games to go up. Like I wouldn't be shocked if Grand Theft Auto 6 is a $100 game because they're not making any money when they sell games for 70 bucks. We had the $60 standard set when the PS3 came out and the whole PS4 generation, they kept that $60 standard for full price games. They only raised it by $10 for the PS5 generation. And apparently that's already been eaten through. Like they're not, they're basically back where they were at the start of the PS5 generation with the $70 purchases of games. So take advantage of stuff like this while you can. Uh, I highly recommend subscribing to PlayStation Stars, setting it up because it only takes a few minutes. And once again, you earn PlayStation Store credit for buying and playing games, which is really the only thing you should be doing on your PlayStation 5 in the first place. So yeah, you should try it out if you haven't yet. Next up here, let's talk about these issues with the PlayStation Network because it is really getting bad lately. It seems like every other week, right when Friday rolls around because people are signing on too many times or too many people are playing online games like Fortnite or Helldivers or Diablo 4, the PSN just continually goes down. And I have noticed it lately as I've been playing a lot more online games on my PS5 that literally every time I get to the end of the work week, all my videos are edited, they're up on the channel, they're ready to be launched. I finally get some time to relax. I got my gym time in. I sit down on the couch. I boot up my PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation Network is down. Even when I can sign into it, it sometimes just doesn't let me into Diablo or it doesn't let me into Helldivers 2. And it's extra frustrating considering I can just walk down here into my basement, boot up Helldivers 2 or Diablo whenever I want. And I virtually never have a problem logging into those games other than like maintenance or whatever. But that's not really the issue with the PSN that I'm talking about. Now in the past, there was always the caveats you could throw out as to why it's okay or like acceptable that the PlayStation Network was so bad. It was traditionally cheaper back in the PS3 days. You didn't need PlayStation Plus to use online services. You got free games. You actually got a ton of free games back in the day. You got PS4 games. You got PS Vita games. You got PS VR games. As time has gone on, they've totally whittled down the amount of games we get every month. The quality has been decent for the PS5 generation, but it really has become like banger release one month and then three months of mediocre garbage. And then you get a banger release that like kind of makes you forget you were mad in the first place. They've got it timed down to some kind of algorithm or something like that. And then now everything is shifted towards pushing you over to PS plus extra and premium. Honestly, I'm fine with that. I don't love the extra library because by the time most of the games show up on there, I already own them. I've already played them. There's really no reason for me to engage with it, but they also raised the price of the PlayStation network by a pretty big degree last year. And I don't think we're getting a better quality product out of that price increase. And it wasn't just premium and extra PS plus essential also got a price hike and we get less games now, like I just said. And now we're getting a quality degradation where every time it feels like I want to get on the PlayStation network, even if it says I'm signed in, there's always some issue in the back end that I have to restart my PS five or just move to my PC to play online games. And I don't think that's good. I think Sony needs to do like what rainbow six siege did where they canceled a season and called it like operation health. And they just rewrote the net code of that game. Halo infinite just had a similar update that was like, instead of a big season, they rewrote the net code of that entire game. The PlayStation network needs an overhaul from top to bottom. It feels like every time they add new features, it just literally makes the service worse. Like it's been this bad since they activated the feature where you could change your PSN name. And I know people really wanted that, but like if they're going to add features and it's just going to cause the service to continue to get worse like this, I'd rather just not be able to change my PSN name. Like it's a monkey paw curling in. You get what you want, but it makes the service basically unusable at the peak times when you actually want to use it. Sorry to make this a rant, but like the PS5 is $500. Games are $70. And a lot of games like the one I'm playing now, Diablo 4 and Helldivers 2, they're always online games. So if you're going to be selling these games that require internet connection, you need to make sure that your servers and your online service are at the baseline accessible at all times, especially when there's like so many people out there who have jobs like working at Meijer or working at gas stations 
or being construction workers or landscapers, you know, real hard work. You're spending eight to 10 hours a day doing when you come home, you want to be able to just sit on the couch and just play some video games. And the one core service that you're basically required to have to actually make use of the vast majority of the features your PS5 offers doesn't work a lot of the time. That's unacceptable. I mean, like I'm bitching about it and I'm a YouTuber. I can only imagine how bad it is for people with a normal job. So yeah, the reason I put this story in here is A, to just vent a little bit about it because it's been frustrating, but B, to ask if you've been having issues with the PSN as well, whether you're on the PS4, the PS5, the PS5 Slim, PS4 Pro. I'm really curious if it's been as bad for you as it's been for me lately. I, I'm assuming it is because as far as my internet goes, I've got fiber here. I've got a gigabit setup. I've got the whole gateway system where I have little towers all around my house that make my service basically 500 megabits down and up everywhere I am in my house. And with that's like the business class level of internet that I'm paying for, it shouldn't be a problem with the PSN. I've tried every trick in the book, like setting it to prefer five gigahertz on that network. I make sure that I reset the internet connection so that it connects to the access point that's right next to the PlayStation 5 instead of the one down here in the basement. And even that is like two steps too far and it still doesn't really seem to help fix the issue. So yeah, if anyone from Sony is watching, please like go bang on the door of the PlayStation network to department because we need some help over here getting this thing up and running as it should be. And then the third news story is I want to talk about this studio that Sony owns where it really feels like it's their last chance for success. And it sucks because this is a situation entirely created by Sony, or at least the vast majority of this situation was created by Sony. The studio I'm talking about is Sony Bend. They're the people who made a ton of my favorite PSP games growing up like Resistance Retribution, which is now available in the classics library on the PlayStation 5. If if you've never played it, I highly recommend it. They also made Uncharted Golden Abyss, which as far as I'm concerned is by far the best PlayStation Vita game. And honestly, it's better than Uncharted 1. So they are a really good studio, but after they moved off of the Vita, they started making full on console games. And their first game was Days Gone. Now, when this game came out, it kind of got screwed by the review process where they sent it out way too early. So there were major performance issues. And then this was like the one game ever released where the day one patch actually fit the vast majority of those performance issues, especially if you were on a PlayStation 4 Pro, you could expect a 1080p 30 FPS pretty much locked throughout the entire game. And as someone who played that game all the way to completion a couple of times now, it's one of Sony's best games they've ever made. The shooting is awesome. The horde mechanics are sweet. The way that you connect with your motorcycle by never being able to actually leave it, how you have to scavenge for gas, your upgrades are actually tangible. You feel like you're actually getting farther on a tank of gas in that game when you upgrade your motorcycle. It had a really good open world loop. It had an awesome map to explore that opens up into a second map in the second half of the game. And once again, if I didn't already say it, the gunplay in that game is incredible. And I love it on PC because there's mods where you can basically kit out Deacon like a uh, Resident Evil hunk operative or like a tactical soldier like in Ghost Recon or something like that. So the mod uh, community for that game has gotten incredible. But because of that review process, it didn't really sell that many copies copies or as many as Sony really wanted and its Metacritic score was far lower than you usually see out of a first party Sony game. So when it came time to make Days Gone 2 because of all that situation that again was created by Sony, they didn't green light Days Gone 2 and then Ben went back to the drawing board with a new IP. We haven't heard much about this new IP, they've been working on it for a few years now, but now some leaks have come out that suggest it's a live service open world action game. So like, you know, stuff like Destiny 2, Diablo 4, Fortnite, all these games that are always online and are once again having problems on the PlayStation Network. And I'm honestly kind of worried about it. I love Ben Studio. Obviously, I have a huge history with their games, but you know, it doesn't seem like they're getting the full resource shakeout that the rest of the studios in the Sony first party IP department are getting. The only big positive is they were safe from the layoffs at Sony, which is good because making a live service game in the first place, as we've seen, is extremely difficult. And it's got to be 10 to 100 times harder if you have your entire staff gutted, like has been happening with a lot of other studios under Sony's umbrella. And the thing that makes me feel like it could be the last chance for Ben Studio is that like if this game doesn't take off, they already have one negative perceived game under their belt in Sony's eyes. Like the public has totally come around on Days Gone, especially once it got added to PS Plus Extra and came to PC, it finally found a huge community of people to play it. But under Sony's vision, it's 
not really living up to the standard they want to set. So if this live service game doesn't come out and become an immediate hit, like something like Helldivers 2 did this year, uh, I think it could be the end of that studio, which would really suck because all the rumors we've been hearing about PlayStation basically tell us they're working on a brand new handheld that's going to compete with the Steam Deck, with Xbox's handheld, with all of these other devices that are out there right now. And they already have this studio that's perfectly suited to make handheld games. They've made them for the entire history of PlayStation's handheld gaming department. And I just want to see them make it to that point. But hearing that they're making a live service game just gets me a little bit nervous. And it makes me once again, totally question this whole big push at Sony for more live service games. So yeah, I'm glad to see third party exclusive games like Rise of the Ronin coming out, even though once again, the graphics aren't up to par. It really seems like a cool open world next gen action game from Team Ninja. And I always have a soft spot for Team Ninja. I've been playing Ninja Gaiden my whole life. I really like Neo and Neo 2. And this seems like kind of them splitting the difference between those style of games and something more like Elden Ring. I bought Rise of the Ronin. I'm planning on playing it tonight to talk about in the next video. But yeah, it's just, it, it's nice to see Sony making games like that. I'm just getting increasingly worried about a lot of their other studios, like more specifically Ben. But yeah, that about covers it. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.